I've had a lot of people ask me lately, what is school going to look like this fall? Um, it's been hard to answer that question because it is something so important and it's something that is so complex because it involves our children and because it involves our educators and because there probably is no one perfect answer. And so I want to make sure that I have an opportunity to hear from you and to hear from those who are the most affected by the decision. And so over the course of the next few weeks, we want to talk about those issues that are so important as we think about the return to school. And we want to make sure that we get all of the perspectives that are out there and that we have an opportunity to start addressing those questions. And together, we're going to work on the solution. Hi. Well, Venus, thanks for sitting down and talking with me today. Over the next few weeks, we want to be able to share with um, educators, with parents, with students, with um, the community, just some um, plans for going forward. We want to talk a little bit about where we are with education right now, what the um, address some of the questions and concerns that we know are out there. Okay. And so you're really the first person that we're starting this conversation with <laughs> and um, I think that you're the very best person to start with because you've kind of played a dual role. You are a team member at the Department of Education mm -hmm. and um, you're also a parent of two public school students in Arkansas right now. Yes. And so let's start out for just a minute um, with you um, as part of the Division of Elementary and Secondary Education and how has your role changed um, your everyday work life? What, how has that changed over the past few months? Oh, completely different from before. Um, I have gone from being around my coworkers every day and being able to just bounce ideas off of them whenever I wanted to, to working in isolation at home and trying to figure things out on my own. Um, also learning technology that I haven't had to use before um, and juggling my kids doing work, their school work at home and my husband working at home as well. So it has been quite a challenge. We had a, a huge project um, with the virtual career fair that we recently hosted and just trying to put on something like that that we've never done before. Um, from my home office was a, it was a bit of a challenge so okay. lots of zoom calls to try to get everything worked out you talk about being face-to-face -face and being able to be social and mm -hmm. um, always interacting with people mm -hmm. and so um, those career fairs every year draw hundreds of people yes. together people from higher ed people from public schools and then all the uh, people who are interested in becoming a teacher so you took all of that and turned it into a virtual experience. Yes. So tell me a little bit again because I think there were some pretty amazing numbers of participants. <laughs> we had, um, well the, the virtual fair was, it was really cool um, because what I really loved about it was that we could bring everybody from across the state into this one environment and anyone who wanted to join this environment could. Okay. There was no cost to it, you just register if you wanted to attend and on the day of you sign in and you've got access to all these job openings across the state. So I really, really was excited about that part because it just alleviated the concern about people um, having to travel to attend the job fair and some of those school districts who otherwise wouldn't be able to participate, um, they were able to participate. All they had to do was log in and set up a virtual booth. We had over 16,000 hits on our home page, which was phenomenal. That just, that absolutely blew me away. So we had um, engagement all day long, Zooms set up throughout the day. Um, it was, it was just, it was awesome. I don't think we could have gotten that type of engagement if we had a face-to-face -face event. So you definitely have been taking some of the experiences um, that you've learned from using technology, um, connecting with people in different ways. So you've taken those experiences um, and then you also were doing this at the same time you were experiencing being a parent, being at home with your students during their extended AMI. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, were you, did, that, did that help you in any way? Did it cause more? 
um, frustration in the house and just tell us a little bit about your experiences as a parent mm -hmm. during the remote learning. It was a little bit of everything. Um, I've, my kids are a little more text, tech, text savvy than I am so sometimes I had to call on them to help me figure out why something wasn't quite working and usually between the two of them one of them would know the answer. Um, we I think the hardest part was when we were all busy at the same time mm -hmm. um, and my husband would be in his office, I would be in my office and the kids would be on a Zoom. So everybody's Zooming at the same time in the house and that was that was an issue um, with you know our Wi-Fi, our connectivity sometimes. We had some, some issues with that. Um, my, my kids, thankfully, could do their work without a lot of help from me. So my main thing was to make sure that they were actually doing it since they were so relaxed because they were at home. They didn't have the structure that they would have at school. Um, so they would, I had one who would wake up every morning and do her work just like that. And I had one who needed a little motivating to get her work done. So that was probably the hardest part was making sure that both of them were actually doing their work and not, you know, surfing the net or playing games. Sure, and I remember um, talking to um, people at schools and um, they were trying to, to balance the, the thought of, okay, we know that remote learning can't replicate what we're doing on site. Right. And, um, but, they, but we also want to make sure that we're providing as robust of a learning experience as we possibly can for students. Mm -hmm. So um, what, um, what advice would you give to schools when they're thinking about um, the possibility of maybe having to do at least some type of um, learning opportunities that may take place at home, whether it's for small groups of students or larger groups of students. How do you really balance that? And um, did you appreciate having that flexibility as a parent or would you have suggested more structure? I appreciated the flexibility. Um, I would say to schools to just make sure that you are taking into account the variety of students that you have. Everybody's situation at home is different. Um, you have some, some homes where the parents are really hands-on and can be really helpful. And then you have some where the parents are at work and the, the kids are at home by themselves. So all of that has to be taken into account when you're um, delivering these methods of learning that we haven't used before. Um, I really appreciated my school's um, flexibility with parents and they stressed to us do the best you can, don't worry, um, just do do what you can do and let us take care of the rest. So I really appreciated that. Okay. That made me feel really helpful. That was helpful to me and it made me feel like they cared about me as a parent. Let's talk a little bit about the return to on-site instruction and um, your thoughts as a parent, your thoughts um, not only of just your, your students returning mm -hmm. to uh, the on-site environment, but also the thought of uh, you as a working parent mm -hmm. and you know what, what's going through your mind right now. The first thing that comes to my mind is the safety of my children okay. um, and everybody's children. Uh, we want them to be healthy and in a safe environment. That's the first thing. Um, secondly, there are so many options being thrown around um, we had to fill out a survey, we were asked to fill out a survey on uh, returning to school. And so the options were um, coming, your students coming to school half a day and learning at home half a day, or coming to school every other day, or I think one of the other, other options was coming every other week. And so my thought was this will be a little bit of a challenge for me because I don't work half a day and I don't work every other day and I certainly don't work every other week so if I'm at work during the day and, and you know I have to pick my kids up at 12 how am I going to get that done I'm going to be able to leave work in the middle of the day and pick them up and take them home and then come all the way back to work so there's a lot of thought and conversation about the logistics we we've, we've talked about it we don't know how it's going to look yet but we've tried to hammer out details and then a you know, I have 
two kids who have to be at two different schools at two different times and picked up at different times. So there's a lot to take into consideration. And right now, we just don't know. Okay. So um, based on what you've experienced so far, if you could give your school's advice, mm -hmm. you know, just as a parent, and you could say, you know, this is what you could really do to help us as parents, what would be the advice you would give to your schools? I would ask my schools to please show your parents some grace and your students some grace and we will do the same. We are in unknown territory right now. No one knows what's going to happen. It changes from day to day. So I would just say just be patient with us, we'll be patient with you, continue to be flexible, give us those options, um, and recognize that not everyone's situation will be the same, so what works for me may not work for another parent, but be willing to help us all. And so, um, thinking about you as an um, ADE team member, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to us and your other team members in terms of how do we make sure that we still do the very best job in providing leadership, support, and service to schools, to communities, and also to our team members? What advice would you have for the, the uh, Department of Education? My advice would be to continue to listen to the voices of the people who are putting these guides together. Um, have a, a really good amount of opinions and experiences that are coming to the table to help provide these resources to the school districts. Everybody's going to have a different viewpoint. Um, what one person didn't think about, someone else will. And I think that's how you really can put together comprehensive guidelines for our school districts that cover all bases by having a lot of people to contribute who have different experiences. I would say keep doing that.